Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Round 15 in the bag. Uh, wow, what a what a crap end to the round. The, f the first start of the round was amazing. Everything was going really, really well. And then the Sharks decided to get embarrassed. Uh, that's another crappy captain score in the bag as well. I think I've got about six. I think I've got about six so far. So let's go over everything. I scored a 12.02 with Heinz as captain, a player getting injured, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on. Top 10% was in the top 7% before this round, but hopefully with my planning this week, I can go back to the top 7% or at least go a little bit higher. So... We'll go over the team. We'll go over what happened. We'll start from the top. Obviously, um, Cook with a nice 100. He's off to origin. Obviously, with Appy and his broken jaw, he's going to be out for quite some time. So, didn't exactly plan for Damien Cook to be playing origin, but that's, that's how the cookie crumbles. So, we're left holding him. So obviously no hooker this week. To be honest, the hooker situation for everybody is absolute carnage. I mean, you've got Hook, Cook out, you've got Grant out, you've got JMK out, you've got Marnie is probably the best option this week to be a hooker, and that is disgusting. I've got Sonny Luke here that's named on the bench, but he's um he's turning out to be the worst trade in I've had this year since the start. It's cost me a lot. I wish I moved him on. It's pretty much like having enough in the side. So, especially an AE nightmare. Uh, Fanua Blake with his 60. I mean, I can't really to complain too much about a 60 for a front rower. The horse with a 70, not too bad, not too shabby. The Raiders absolutely did not turn up to the occasion that game. And I think that if you were to actually look at the teams and look at the form that both are in, Warriors were going into that into that game the far better in form side. I actually tipped the Raiders. I actually thought that they would turn up for the occasion, but the Warriors' defense was just too good. Um, Tarpany with a forty nine. Now, I don't know what's going on with Tarpany. He did play minutes. Like, it wasn't like he didn't play any minutes. He got 61 or 62 minutes that game for a 49. But I don't know. I don't know what the go is with, with Taps. And I think that eventually he is obviously going to be a trade-out because you do want to get in a front rower like your Tino's, like your Payne Haas towards the back end of the season. And I think that if you can somehow manage to find the cash to be able to upgrade Tarpany to someone like that, I think definitely that's going to be something that you would want to do um, after game three of Origin. So he's a disappointing hold. So yeah. Tohu with a 76. Tohu's back to his old self, which is amazing to see. Um, and Nick, I mean, look, here's what I was saying before. The last game of the round destroyed my whole round. So, Nikara with a 55, he ended up getting sin-binned in a team that got destroyed. So, I, I don't know. I can only imagine what he could have scored if he, if the Sharks were somewhat in that game. Um... Katoa, I bought him in two weeks ago. How annoying. So he's obviously out this week. That laceration above his eye is obviously pretty bad. So he scored a 12 for me. So annoying because Katoa in that side, he would have scored very well that game. Let's just say he scores a 70 which was likely with how the Storm were playing and how the Storm's edge players were finding holes all the time during that game. 
Katoic up to a 70 points or whatever turns my score from 1200 up to 1270 which is somewhat reasonable for the round annoying um schuster with a 37 Hines had his chance to tell Freddie that he was ready for Origin and he did not step up to the plate. So I don't know if it was... Well, obviously it's not completely Hines' fault for how the Sharks played that game, but he... I think, the, I think what happened was the Storm as a side were just far better. I don't think it was Hines that played poorly. I think the Storm just turned up for the game and just completely outplayed the whole shark side not just Hines. so but that's footy that's how critical it is Hines misses out on his spot so congratulations to all the people who held Hines. he is now a out and out captain choice this week against the bulldogs um ponga so i brought ponga in last week for dylan brown Banged out a 92. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Hopefully, he can continue this scoring and he can get up to 700k-ish because I would like to finish the year with either Munster or Dylan Brown if he does get through this um, court case. But we all know how, how the NRL go about this and... Uh, I mean, look, we could potentially not see Dylan Brown for the rest of the year. Court cases never usually um, finish when they are supposed to. So, Manu with a 51. So, back with Dylan Brown. If you do still have Dylan Brown, you held on to him. I potentially would move him on. It's just a lot of money sitting there on the pine not being used. Same with people who still have Cleary, like myself. I'll be moving Cleary on this week myself. So, but we'll go over all the trade talks at the end. Um, Asako with a 66. Garrick, 169. So, people who VC Garrick, well done to you. Very, very lucky play. Because there is absolutely no world where anybody saw Garrick scoring 169 in the center. So if you put the v, um, v on him, you got absolutely kissed on the dick. Congratulations. That would have helped you score easily above 1400 for the round. Um, absolutely no salt. I wish I did it. Congratulations to everyone who did. Uh, Ronaldo Molotalo, 73 in a side that got butchered. I mean, look, a winger scoring 73 in a side that got embarrassed that says enough about um, about Ronaldo Mulatalo as a must have especially going into this week especially over the next I'd say I'd say a season keeper I definitely say a season keeper uh, Lemuelu 42 pretty much at my wits end with Lemuelu I think that's going to be it for him I won't trade him out this week, but next week, potentially, his BE is quite high now. It's up to, I think it's close to 100, so definitely going to be um, moving Lemuelu on. Um, AJ with the 28, no Cody, no AJ. So no Cody, no Luttrell even reinstates that. AJ is just a very poor base stat winger and especially without their key playmakers he is not super coach relevant so put him on the pine and i'm glad uh buller with a 95 obviously still continues to make money which is absolutely insane he's got a low be this week again i think he's got like a 20 be so i mean he could literally be more expensive than the trell soon so crazy scenes there uh dylan edwards with a 69 so all in all the actual side itself scored well but the sharks game for me at the end was costly because hind scores poorly katoa goes off for 12 
Nicola scores 55. It's not terrible, but it's not amazing. Going into that game, my side was actually looking... Well, put it this way. Going into that last game, I was projected for 1,300 plus. Finishing on 1,200. So it wasn't a very good finish for the round. So I actually turned the game off towards the end. Um, but anyway, let's go over... Um, most traded outs and most traded ins. So obviously the most traded out this week in my side in the top 10% is your Nathan Cleary. Now, a lot of people, I personally am trading Cleary out, but if you were to have a look at the options that you have for this week, um, obviously SJ, nobody's gonna be trading him in, he's on a buy. Moses, the people who traded Moses in are not very happy about that at the moment. So you've got yourself Burton. Ben Hunt's obviously not a buy. DC is not a buy. Adam Reynolds is not a buy. And you just keep going down the ranks. And it's just, it's, it's, it's an absolute wasteland for people to be looking at getting in a player for Cleary. Um... You've got Jerome Hughes. Now, Jerome Hughes was someone I am looking at. So, obviously, he's got a low BE this week of 32 up against the Tigers. He has got that 119 now in his rolling average. He does play the Tigers. He does go into Manly at Amy Park. And then he runs into the store, um, um, runs into Panthers. Now, I think that Hughes could be the guy to downgrade Cleary to. But if you don't if you don't need the cash elsewhere, I would possibly look at maybe a a Burton, but it's one of those I think it's it's completely team dependent and I think that if you need the cash, Hughes is the go. If you don't need the cash, obviously you would go with Burton. But then you've also got to look at your numbers for round 17 because a lot of people are going to be stung with numbers in round 17. So obviously it's team dependent. Check your numbers for team seven um, for round 17. If you are already set and you don't need extra numbers for round 17, I would probably go with Burton. If you do need the numbers for round 17, I would be looking at um, Hughes. Simple. Done. So... I'm going to be tall, blah, I'm going to be putting Hughes in, um, and I'm just going to have a look to see how things look with him in. So, complete the trade. So we've got 318k. Now, we'll go back down and we'll have a look at people that were trading Cleary out. So obviously, people trading Cleary out. We'll go back into people. Um, so the other players that were being traded out. So, Eliezer Katoa. Um, I'm, I bought in Eliezer Katoa a couple of weeks ago, and I don't think I'm going to be trading him out because that is just an absolute waste of a trade. Billy Smith. I think Billy Smith trading him out this week while they, while he's a, a like, while he's a warm body, as they say, I think it's a luxury trade. I think that as I think trading out green ticks this week isn't ideal. I think it's a luxury. So if you have, let's just say if you have 10, 11, 12 players for this round and you are trading out green ticks for another green tick, I don't advise that. I think that's a wasted trade. But if you're stocked up on trades and you have boosts and by all means, go for gold. Um, Connolly and Lemuelu, another most traded out. I look. I'm on the bat. I'm on the. Um, I'm on the same, same boat as people doing that. I just won't be doing that this week. AJ, I disagree with. I think AJ is definitely a hold. I mean, you're looking at once Cody comes back, once Latrell comes back, once the Origin cattle come back, holding AJ. For the back end of the year could definitely pay pay dividends but obviously team dependent 
So we'll go into the most traded in, that's not in my side, in the top 10%. Simkin. Now, I have looked at Simkin, and I don't think that that is ideal. I think that he will be, obviously, a player that will play for the next five weeks or so until Appy comes back. But I don't know if he's going to be holding, or I don't think he's going to be playing a lot of minutes to justify bringing in someone at 235k. I think if you've already got two decent hookers in your side, I wouldn't go anywhere near it. I think if you've got Sonny Luke and you want to go to Simkin, I think that's potentially sideways. I don't like the trade. But moving on. Um, Nick Meany, I looked at bringing in Meany last week. I don't mind it, especially against the Tigers. I think, obviously, without Munster, he sees more ball, sees more attack, exactly the way that Gutho performed on the weekend. No Dylan Brown, Gutho gets more ball. I'd say it would be relatively the same. So I am considering bringing in Meany this week. Um, Gutho... Oh, man. So, I stuffed up a couple of weeks ago, and I went gutho to Dylan Edwards, and I absolutely regret doing that. And hindsight wins again. I shouldn't have done it, but obviously, I mean, every single player this year can say that they regret some trades. Some more than others, and I am definitely one of those people. Now, um, Karaz, another one that's highly bought in this week. I just don't know. I think that that injury that Karaz copped at the start of the year, he just doesn't look anywhere near the player that he was. I don't know if it's confidence or if it's an actual, if he's still playing injured. I can't imagine he's still playing injured, but at 480k, if you need the numbers for this week, sure, go for gold. But I don't think he is a must trade in. Um, Junior Pauga, Porga, don't even know how to pronounce that one. Um, Senna, 265k. Again, if you need the numbers and you've got enough in your Senna wing spot and you've got that little bit of extra cash, potentially you could go up to him and he could be a scorer for your side this week. But outside of that, nothing really stands out for me. Um, so let's go over my trades quickly. So I am consider obviously I've gone down to Hughes. I've gone clearly down to Hughes, which banks me 318k. Now I'm obviously really wanting to pump the brakes on my trades because obviously I've only got 13 left. But this week I have the ability to plug some holes. Now I can upgrade Pele to Olakawatu, um, which was something that I really looked at. Um, I just need to have a look at Manly's run and whether or not Olakawatu is going to benefit from that. At the same time, he is getting rid of someone who is useless in the side. So... I am considering Pele to Olakawatu. I'm also considering moving Willie Army out of my side and bringing in someone that plays this weekend. So, if I was to go, that's definitely not what I want. If I was to go Willie Army, it would be to someone like a Karaz, but it's not a must. So I'm pretty sure with the trade from Hughes to Cleary, that gives me, where are we? So, This is counting Sonny Luke. So one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I have thirteen players this week with only making one trade and banking the 318k. I think this period of time is golden. So I I am leaning towards only making that one trade. So at this point in time, it is Hughes. Um, it is clear to Hughes. I don't need to make any other trades, but the temptation of going uh, Pele to Olukawatu is definitely there. So I'm going to make it work now. So what I'll do is I'm going to trade in I don't know why that's playing up. I'll figure that out. But Pele to Olukawatu could be my second trade. So Hughes, Cleary to Hughes, Pele to Olukawatu, which will give me 14 players for this week. My captain choice is obviously out and out Hines. I'm going to be putting the VC on Manu at fullback. And I think I'll score relatively okay, but let's just see what the super coach gods have in store. My hot takes. So my hot take for this week is I'm going to pick a top scorer out of my side. And I think that, let's say top scorer outside of Hines, because I think Hines does an absolute job on the Bulldogs. Top scorer in the side, I'm going to go with Mulatalo. I think Mulatalo could potentially ton up and score 110 to 120. I don't like the Bulldogs' defense at the moment, and I think with Nico, I don't think he's going to be very happy about being snub for origin. I think he's going to be coming out to prove a point. And if Nico is coming out to prove a point, you can dare say that Mulatalo is going to be on the end of that. So Mulatalo is my hot take for a 120 this week. So 120 for Mulatalo. I think Ponga could also have another big one. The Roosters look terrible. And the Knights are almost at full strength. So I do have Ponga down for potentially tonning up. That's my other hot take. So two hot takes. Mulatalo 120 and Ponga to ton up. See how she goes. Anyway, thanks for listening. If you haven't subscribed already, do so, please, and thank you. It helps the channel. And um, hopefully everybody has a side this week. It's been pretty um, pretty dreadful with injuries and, and whatnot, so hopefully everybody's got a side. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking about doing with your trades and how you're looking for this week numbers-wise. And that'll just about do it. So thanks for listening, guys, and I'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye.